Chapter 7, The Matter of Purpose. By looking for a should and a supposed to, we're starting from an incorrect premise. Of course, in time and space, E.T. souls are not quite home. So how can we tell who might indeed be a wanderer? One simple way is to find the person who's worrying about finding their purpose on Earth. As I continue my own wandering travels around the world, I'm continually meeting people who ask me, why am I here? They often feel great anxiety as they struggle to undercover some kind of preordained path or social role. And the question they usually ask is this, what am I supposed to be doing? I tell them that I honestly don't know if they're supposed to be doing anything, and if they're still listening, since some people turn off at that point, disappointed I didn't do a psychic reading, I then add that it's this kind of thinking that keeps them from finding their purpose. To settle the matter of purpose, which is essential to the life and well-being of wanderers, as well as anyone else who cares about personal growth, you must recall the awareness you had before you were born, which certainly cannot be done by typical human reasoning. One needs to return to a more primordial consciousness, a state of mental quiet, purity, and simplicity. The problem is that by looking for a should and a supposed to, we're starting from an incorrect premise, which dooms our conclusions from the start. It's far better to ask this, how do you know that there's anything you should be doing? This needle and haystack approach, which says, I could do anything, but I must first find the thing I have to do, is both simplistic and dogmatic. The raw group offers an essential perspective here. Quote, it was the aim of wanderers to, one, serve the entities of this planet in whatever way was requested, and two, it was also the aim of wanderers that their vibration or vibratory patterns might lighten the planetary vibration as a whole. Specific intentions, such as aiding in a situation not yet manifest, are not the aim of wanderers. Light and love go where they are sought and needed, and their direction is not planned aforetimes. It seems to me this passage brings us a lot closer to the mind of self-sacrifice, which wanderers, and all those who serve, knew quite well before taking birth. The sentence bears repeating, quote, Light and love go where they are sought and needed, and their direction is not planned aforetimes. This is exactly the mind of a true server giving what is needed when and where it is needed, without much personal agenda or personal goals. This attitude is epitomized in the simple title of a classic book by Ram Das, How Can I Help? After explaining this, Ra added that there are three forms of service planned by E.T. souls once the forgetting is penetrated, which, for most E.T.s on Earth, usually is not. Of course, these forms of service also apply to anyone who cares to make the world a better place. And the quote goes on, quote, In addition to, one, the doubling effect of planetary love and light, and two, the basic function of serving as a beacon or shepherd, three, each wanderer has its unique abilities, biases, and specialties, an array of pre-incarnative talents, which then may be expressed upon this plane, end quote. In short, then, wanderers come to Earth to simply offer love and light, freely, openly, without consideration of reward or social role. At the levels of awareness upon which cosmic souls dwell before their 3D veils, the great potential of rendering useful service to Earth and humanity was more than enough to merit the hazards and trials of direct incarnation, which is, by the way, somewhat like parachuting behind enemy lines armed only with love. What is the grand purpose you are here for, you the unknown visitor from realms beyond conception? Just be kind and helpful. As the Dalai Lama says, kindness is my religion. Life purpose is really that simple. Esoterically, the radiatory effect of love and light is also more profound than we imagine. Why is it that great yogis, adepts, and masters of the East stay in their lonely caves when they profess such universal compassion? simply because they know how to consciously radiate higher energies by mind, and they understand how thought influences physical reality. Serving the world, a task which seems to imply such a huge burden, really depends on the way we live each moment, day by day. For more on this practice, see Moment to Moment in Section 2. The three functions that Ra notes are the primary means by which wanderers are now serving Earth to fulfill their purpose. 
Of these, the first, i.e., the doubling effect of planetary love and light, means simply showing up. To the extent you're balanced and living in kindness and clarity, to just that extent does your very presence radiate harmonious energy that aids the planet. Again, this form of service also applies to non-wanderers. So what is the prescription for a sprained personal purpose? Just be at ease in yourself and offer it freely to the world. The second function explained by Ra, acting as a, quote, beacon or shepherd, also does not mean we must adopt some special social role. Essentially, or literally, a beacon brings light and guidance to those traveling in the dark, which sounds like Earth to me, and a shepherd protects and shelters the innocent flock. The symbolism here is ripe, and again, it's just a matter of how we live day by day. The act of service is fulfilled by the mind of service in each moment of being. It's only when we come to the third and final function that some degree of soul-searching and social placement is needed, in the expression of each wanderer's unique talent. Yet, this simply tells us to do what we like and follow our heart. Since the true act of service rests upon attitude, you can drive a San Francisco limo, help the Ohio dentist, fix Seattle computers, sell ladies' clothing in Indiana, or paint alone in your New York basement, and still serve the whole world. It's all a matter of awareness. What is served to the planet is simply your state of being. Of course, once you've found your niche, a line of expression compatible with your own skills and desires, then the work becomes a little more subtle. Then it's a matter of poise and skillful means, called upaya in the Buddhist tradition, serving fully and freely, wisely and well, all the while keeping balanced in body-mind-spirit. Questions at that point are more fine-tuned. What to give, how much to give, when to wait, how much you need, and how to embody universal consciousness in each particular situation. These are more subtle issues that demand self-reflection and an ample dose of honesty with oneself. Here's where meditation and some kind of group support are most helpful, since they provide the inner depth and outer structure within which our individual purpose can be developed in society. As we progress along the path, the needed balances become more delicate. Last but not least, we should not underestimate the tremendous power that wanderers generate by simply waking up to their unusual identity. Again, we can turn to passages from Ra to get more insight on the potency of directed spiritual work on Earth. Quote, The wanderer, if it remembers and dedicates itself to service, will polarize much more rapidly than is possible in the far more etiolated, which means made pale by excluding light, these far more etiolated realms of higher density catalyst. This accelerated learning available on Earth is due to the intensive life experiences and opportunities of the third density. Thusly, the positively oriented wanderer chooses to hazard the danger of the forgetting in order to be of service to others by radiating love of others. If the forgetting is penetrated, the amount of catalyst in third density will polarize the wanderer with much greater efficiency than shall be expected in the higher and more harmonious densities. End quote. As you must realize by now, Earth is a schoolhouse, and for wanderers, it's also an intensive training ground that holds the promise of accelerating evolution far more rapidly than if we simply stayed home. It also bears noting that Ra describes the higher realms as etiolated, an unusual and rarely used word that describes a plant deprived of sunlight or a person with a sickly hue. Of course, the group in Kentucky that channeled this contact had never heard of the word before. Have you ever heard the so-called higher dimensions described this way? I certainly have not, and upon reflection, it makes me appreciate the raw contact all the more. But their point is clear. From the standpoint of useful catalyst that creates opportunities for developing consciousness, Earth life in this lower density is far more useful and desirable than the blissful higher realms. Wanderers should not feel so bad about being here. If evolution is your goal, you can relax in knowing you're definitely in the right place, even though your purpose may seem vague at times. If you already know your cosmic nature and the importance of service, appreciating both kindness and clarity, and truly sensitive to the needs of others in daily life, then everything is right on track, just as you planned. In fact, excessive worry and self-doubt will throw you off balance and impair the fullness of your offering, 
since they impair the wholeness of self-appreciation. Self-appreciation, a quality associated with six chakra, the third eye that is gateway to higher self, is essential to link us up to cosmic power. Just realize that what is offered in service is simply just you, wanderer or not, which is why the very personal work of balancing mind-body-spirit and opening to total self-acceptance is so central to the path of service. In the next few chapters, we will expand our focus to a more cosmic level and see how ET groups themselves fulfill the mandate of universal service. But first, let's take a brief look at the last million years of ET Earth history. <laughs> 